All right, thank you for coming out this morning. Today what we're going to be talking about is some of the research that myself and my collaborator Lee Fabregar had looked at that examines the influence of different properties of voice that reflect confidence on persuasion and the underlying psychological mechanisms that uh, drive this process according to different levels of thought. So today, more specifically, we're going to be looking at how rate of speech influences persuasion under more moderate or intermediate levels of thinking. And although a great deal of communication occurs orally, persuasion researchers have largely overlooked how different properties of the speaker's voice might influence the success of a persuasive appeal. Now, we know that people make a lot of inferences uh, about others based on characteristics of their voice. Now, one characteristic that has been well documented and that leads to clear theoretical predictions as far as how it should influence persuasion is vocal confidence. But what characteristics of our voice communicate confidence? Well, researchers have found that compared with unconfident speakers, confident speakers communicate louder, faster, and use falling intonation at the end of their sentences. However, as these hallmarks of vocal confidence relate to persuasion, researchers have only investigated rate of speech. And even within the context of rate of speech, comparatively little has been done. On top of which, the research looking at how vocal properties influence persuasion uh, has a variety of methodological issues, including how voice has been manipulated, the fact that only rate of speech has been examined, and that very little in the way of testing the underlying psychological mechanisms has been attempted. So this experiment sought to address some of these issues by creating more refined manipulations of voice using digital recording and editing technology by investigating a more broad spectrum of speech rate and how that influences perceptions of confidence as well as persuasion. And we used the elaboration likelihood model as our theoretical framework to test the predictions that under more moderate levels of thinking, uh, rate of speech influences persuasion based on how it affects the amount of processing. So as I mentioned, under more moderate or intermediate levels of thought, the ELM suggests that a variable, in this case vocal confidence, should influence a person's attitude based on how it affects the amount of processing. Now, in other words, a variable can push us to expend more or less cognitive resources towards processing a message. Now, as this applies to vocal confidence, if a person sounds very confident, we may think they have something important to say, which of course might suggest that paying attention would be a good idea. But of course, if they don't sound confident, and even they don't seem to believe what they're saying, well then why would we expect cognitive resources to pay attention? Now, thinking of how rate of speech might impact amount of processing, at a certain point it should impact our ability to process the content, because the speaker is going to be talking so fast that we're not going to be able to process what they're saying. But at a rate of speech that's also comparatively rapid, that could also undermine our motivation to pay attention because we may think they seem somewhat anxious. So here what we did was investigate the process by which rate of speech influences persuasion under more moderate levels of thought, and to do that we fully crossed the strong and weak arguments with four levels of speech rate, ranging from extremely slow at 114 words per minute to extremely fast at 194 words per minute. Now, when running this study, what we did was first randomly assign participants to receive either strong or weak arguments in favor of a university service plan that proposed working for the university in exchange for a reduction in tuition. Now, we increased speech rate by 10% and 13% relative to the speaker's natural baseline rate of speech and decreased it by 15 and 35%. Uh, all participants then received the audio passage which was delivered by a female speaker, um, after which they rated the speaker on a variety of dimensions, including, of course, confidence. Following that, we obtained a measure of their attitude towards the university service plan, and then they listed and rated the favorability of their thoughts as they applied to this university service plan. Now, what we're going to do next is just walk through some of the analyses that confirm the success of our manipulation. So, first what we'll do is look at the uh, manipulation check of our rate of speed manipulation. Now what we did was conduct an ANOVA in which rate of speech and argument quality were our independent variables and of course participants ratings of how fast the speaker was talking was their dependent variable. Now what we expected 
was a linear increase in vocal speed that corresponded with our manipulations of speech rate. And as you can see, this is exactly what we found. And no other effects emerged. Now we next examined the effects of speech rate on confidence to the same ANOVA as in the prior analysis, but of course with participants' ratings of the speaker's confidence as our DV. Now, our expectation was that speech rate would have a curvilinear effect on ratings of confidence because at extremely fast rates of speech, we may perceive the speaker as being somewhat anxious. And as you can see, this is exactly what we found. But I should mention that at extremely rapid rates of speech, we do in fact see a significant decrease in ratings of speaker confidence relative to what participants rated the speaker at a more uh, moderate level of speed. We now turn to look at the effects of speech rate on attitudes, and once again, we use the same ANOVA, but of course, with participants post-message attitudes as our dependent variable. Now, because the majority of prior research has shown that speech rate has an effect on attitudes such that faster talkers are more persuasive, we anticipated similar results. However, because our belief is that uh, the effects of speech rate on persuasion are driven by perceptions of confidence, and confidence has a curvilinear effect on persuasion, we expected a very similar pattern to emerge. And as you can see, this was in fact the case. Now at extremely rapid rates of speech, rather than seeing a decrease in attitudes, we actually see more of a leveling off. And so this pattern largely maps on to our expectations. Now finally, of course, we wanted to confirm that our argument quality manipulation was successful, which again was done through the same ANOVA, of course, with participants' pulse message attitudes as a dependent variable. <coughs> and being one of the more robust findings in social psychology, particularly the attitudes literature, naturally we'd expect to find strong arguments, are significantly uh, more powerful at listening favorable attitudes towards this plan in this case, than weak arguments, and indeed, this is exactly what we now moving along to look at the underlying psychological mechanisms that the elaboration likelihood model predicts should emerge under more moderate levels of thinking, again, by amount of processing. In this case, we tested the two-way interaction between rate of speech and argument quality of participants' post-message attitudes. And this is the gold standard by which uh, this has been traditionally looked at. Um, in the attitudes literature, using argument quality, and of course, in this case, rate of speech. Now here, what we would expect to find is that if a person is carefully processing the message, we should find large differences in attitudes based on the quality of the arguments. And of course, if a person is not carefully thinking, then the quality of those arguments are not going to have much of an effect on their attitude. So at extremely slow rates of speech, we expected uh, the person is not going to be perceived as very confident, and so the recipient is not going to invest much effort into processing what they have to say, in which case we expect comparatively small differences in participants' attitudes as a function of argument quality. However, as, participant, as the speaker rather begins to talk a little bit faster, they're going to be perceived as more confident, which in turn should influence the participant to pay more attention to the message, and so we would expect larger differences in their attitudes. Now, moving on to at an extremely fast rates of speech, here what we'd expect is either through ability, because the speaker's talking too fast, or motivation, because they're perceived as anxious, we should see a decline in amount of processing, which in turn should close up the gap here uh, when comparing the effects of argument quality on attitudes. And so that's the basic logic of our expectations. Now, what we see in our data is a pattern that largely maps on to what we would expect. So at extremely slow rates of speed, we see that uh, the effects of argument quality on attitudes are comparatively modest. But when we move up to a moderately slow rate of speed, this effect increases exactly as we would expect, where participants were clearly processing uh, what the speaker had to say significantly more because they perceived them as being more confident. And in fact, this difference here was significant, which indeed suggests that amount of processing was increasing. Now, when we move up to more moderate rates of speech, we would expect this effect to narrow, because amount of processing could be affected by perhaps either ability or motivation, and we do see this gap start to close up. Uh, the difference here is not significant, however, when we push things to more extreme end, 
the speaker was speaking at a comparatively rapid rate of speech, we do see a decrease in amount of processing. And when we compare the effect of argument quality on amount of processing at the most optimal level of speed with what we see at the more extreme end, this difference is in fact significant, which supports our predictions. Okay, so our final analyses looked at our thought favorability measure, which again used the same ANOVA, but with participants ratings of thought favorability as a dependent measure. Now, although our um, model suggests that a two-way interaction between focal speed and argument quality should emerge, as you can see, this effect failed to reach significance. However, the general pattern very much resembled what we found with the amount of processing effects on participants' post-message attitudes. Now, I should mention the fact that this effect was non-significant is not entirely surprising when considering the comparatively less sensitive nature of thought reading measures. So taken together, these data provide some evidence to suggest that under more moderate or intermediate levels of thought, rate of speech influences process, uh, attitudes rather, based on how it impacts our amount of processing. Now it also suggests that as speech rate increases, attitudes become somewhat less favorable to strong arguments, whereas they become more favorable towards weak arguments. And in moving forward, of course, there's numerous potential directions we can take at this point. One possibility, naturally, is to first replicate these effects while specifically testing the contributions of both ability and motivation. Another possibility might be to examine how different vocal qualities, such as perhaps intonation or vocal pitch, influence persuasion across a broader range of these uh, variables under more moderate levels of thought, or perhaps how combinations of these variables have additive or perhaps interactive effects on persuasion. That brings us to the end of today's talk. Thank you very much.